Hi, my name is Jamie Lee. I'm the news editor at MM&M &M Magazine. I'm here today with Heather Gervais, Vice President of Commercial Sponsorship at Athena Health. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So I wanted to start, um, if you can tell us a little bit about some of the top trends impacting the healthcare landscape right now. I think there's a lot of changes going on in the healthcare landscape. I think there's three primary ones that are converging that have the biggest impact on pharmaceutical markers. The first is physician consolidation. So about two thirds of physicians are actually either employed or closely affiliated with larger health systems, which means reps are getting less access, and treatment decisions are being consolidated kind of at a central level. Um, the second is the payment model. So it's changing from fee for service for fee for value and actually looking at how do we take costs out of the healthcare system. And then the third is really technology, the adoption of EMRs and um, other technology helping for hopefully interoperability in the future. But today it's probably just more frustrating physicians than anything else. Um, but I think these are all things that pharma marketers need to be looking at as they think about how they're going to go to market with their brands. Right now, do you see EHRs as a as marketing channel for, for pharma? Yes, I think that's a big debate going on, at least internally. I know we have that conversation a lot. Uh, I do think, you know, if you think of the traditional sense of what is a marketing channel, so it's probably any vehicle where you can reach and influence your intended audience. So to some extent, yes, except at Athena Health, we hear often our physicians saying that they don't want traditional advertisements kind of you know, embedded within their workflow, but they are supportive of other things. So patient education and materials that pharma does a great job putting together, being able to have that they're supportive kind of post prescription is what we're hearing is more impactful for the physicians. What are the biggest mistakes then that pharma marketers are making in this space? Yeah, so I think the biggest mistake is going back to that first question is that a lot of pharma marketers are just saying, you know, I need to be in the EMR space, just like they were 10 years ago saying, I need to be in mobile. So it's, it's, the, it's the buzzword, it's the hot thing. And they're not necessarily treating it as um, a different or unique type of channel. And so therefore they're just trying to embed kind of traditional advertisement or messaging. And really um, at Hippocrates, we've had for a long time where we work with physicians in the moments of care, a methodology we use. So it's called a cure, accurate, current, unbiased, relevant, and essential. And I think it's important to keep that in mind when you're coming up with your plan of how you're gonna reach physicians in the moments of care and be supportive and not disruptive. What are the ways that pharma marketers are working with EHRs now? So I think right now, at least from our perspective, we're seeing a lot of folks who are thinking about, again, some advertisement, there are certainly some players out there, especially EHRs that are free. I think the physicians might be more open and receptive to receiving advertisements, so there is a play there. But I think the bigger play is actually working with them and saying, how can I actually add value, not just kind of pill plus was the thing, so now it's how do I add value beyond my pill? So what we're seeing is that pharmaceutical marketers have great um, patient education materials, coupons and vouchers. They also have their own screening tools oftentimes or certain types of guidelines and being able to maybe subsidize and present them there at the moment of care through their EHR technology is actually beneficial and physicians are open to that. So what's next then? So I wish I had the crystal ball to see what was next, but I think what we're seeing at least early stages are there's a lot of data that EHRs and also practice management companies are sitting on. So claims data, clinical data, um, and we're all just trying to figure out how we can actually leverage that data and help pharmaceutical brands make decisions, whether that be kind of real world eff effectiveness, kind of like what's happening in the wild outside the clinical trial, or if you want to take a look at it and say, how can I actually follow a patient journey and see like when they're taking certain drugs, when they're getting certain labs done, when is the physician switching? So there's a lot of information there. But I think the thing that will probably, and that's a little bit now, but probably in the next one to two years, we'll really see that. But then I think also, because there's a, physicians have moved from managing an individual patient and their disease to patient, managing proactively patient populations, I think we're gonna start to see pharma playing a bigger role with like their apps and tools and actually using the current APIs that a lot of companies do to actually plug into EHRs. I think pharma will start to do that too and figure out where their sweet spot is, where they can plug in. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me.